<laughs> I can't do it. Mad Cowbell Covers! Review! Cowbell Cheers, welcome back. Today, we are doing another loss in the music industry. Goodness, <laughs> Dusty Hill, bass player and singer, or one of the singers for ZZ Top. Wow, ZZ Top. I didn't know a lot about until the 80s when Eliminator, I believe, and the song Legs, I believe it was called Legs, that hit MTV and I heard that and I was like, cool. But before that, <laughs> always there's something weird before that with the Friday night videos on NBC that used to kind of come after Letterman or whatever it was. Yeah, after Letterman, Friday night videos came on. They played TV dinners and it was this little claymation character coming out of this Swanson TV dinner. This is not endorsed by Swanson. Hey, Swanson. I got a space, holla. <laughs> but I loved it. I would listen to that and I heard Legs and I love the song Legs after you know hearing all the other stuff. It was just so cool. The cats had weird beards and the guy named Frank Beard didn't have a beard at all. It was great. This was so fun and I became a fan and I loved the next stuff after this even when it went, what I heard was drum machine sounding stuff. So I didn't know the Texas grooves that they were really known for. The song we're up to today was ZZ Top, LaGrange. And LaGrange has a Texas shuffle that is so good. It, it, when I was playing it and I was playing along, I left Frank Beard's track in because my left hand, I didn't want to try to fake that. I needed to try to lock into where he is or where he was at the time. In 1973, this song grooved. There were so many ZZ Top songs that have grooved and uh, I've done a few others and I didn't want to, I looked at you know what was the most played cover of ZZ Top and this was it. There weren't as many covers of the other ones so I thought this would be a better version for Mad Cowbell. Woo, goodness, that groove that Frank Beard laid down and you hear Dusty Hill, rest in peace Dusty, those vocals on Tush, Wow. It's a drag to lose people. He was just playing, I think, a show last week. Musicians. It's an unusual life. I had a friend tell me a story one time. We were downtown Nashville playing, and he was doing Western Swing. Loved playing behind this guy. This cat was nuts, and he had crazy energy. Super, super tall, and every time I played behind him, it was always fun. And He liked it because I added energy behind where he was doing it. I wasn't real laid back. I was kind of pushing forward to really kind of be showing and bringing a show. He would talk about that with me. He had a, he was playing a show somewhere in the Midwest and he had a pedal steel player playing with him and said, this guy never took care of himself and they looked over and he was, they were always at each other. And he looked over and the guy looked really bad and was sweating and he checked to see, yeah, hey man, are you okay? You need to go do something. No, man, I can play. And he says he went back to the microphone and started singing again. He looked back over. It fell over on his pedal steel, and that was it. On stage, right there. He says, we finished the song. He says, I wasn't really sure what was going on. If he was just kind of laying down, he had a little too much to drink. But after that, we realized what happened. I was like, wow, that's a crazy story. <laughs> this is LaGrange, and that has nothing to do with anything. The sidetrack story should be their own series. LaGrange was a very cool song. This groove was incredible and it was hard to play. You know, I had always, I had played this before doing live band karaoke and stuff. I don't think I ever played this with a band. I think I've always played this in like live band karaoke. It was always fun to play, but when I really broke the parts down that Frank played on that. I love it. It was simple, but the thing was where he put that pocket was incredible. And that's what makes this one hard of this. I love the groove that Dusty Hill lays with the bass and where they are. It is just, you just can't beat it. It's great. The guitar work is fantastic. Goodness. But the fun part about this song is what this song is about. LaGrange had a uh, a whorehouse. A, a business, a place of pleasure. I kind of looked into it because I thought it was fascinating. There was a movie about this in the 80s that Dolly Parton was part of called The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. It's, you know, a serious movie in the 80s. And I remember my parents going to see it. But it was what was this song was about. 1973, they're singing this song. And the story of this place, uh, what was the name of it? The Chicken Ranch, I think was the name of this place. How do we need to pass it really yet? <laughs> if I remember right, there was something that happened. And this place had been open for years to the point where I think... 
I've read stories about dads would take their sons to this place as they almost write a passage to let a professional show them into the world of sex and what it is. They take them to this place in LaGrange. You know, the girls are there. They, the girls in the, I think the movie talks about how, you know, the place was run very well by a madam. It was really the beginning point of these kids. Instead of fumbling in the backseat of a car, it was about going to this place that was kind of under the radar in LaGrange. Some reporter in Houston found out about it and started making a stink about it, to, I guess, to get the likes, you know, back in, you know, 80 or whatever it was. Then it closed down. I don't know when they closed. I have no idea. Incredible. And they ended up shutting this place down that people had used for years and just paid and, I guess, you know, it showed that there were a lot of politicians and they talked about their dads took them there to to let them experience that part of life by a professional instead of you know goofing off and not figuring out and marrying the wrong girl or something like this but that was the idea behind professional you know sex work is work that's what the song is about which is great i love the odd stories in songs that are a little deeper but there's a movie about it there's the songs about it it is fun I wanted to play this, a lot of people played it, and I am pumped to see how people did it because that left hand shuffle was one of the first things when I got to Nashville that you get asked to do is that left hand shuffle. After you understand the country shuffle and the two beat and the train, that Texas shuffle, you have to start being able to play because that left hand is completely back. It is a different feel the way it drops and comes back and drops and comes back. It is it's unusual and a amazing thing to work out. So, and it's all fingers. If you're doing it stiff arm, oh, it's bad. But it's all it's all finger technique, almost like a molar thing. But being able to go back and forth, uh, I don't know, got me. Hey, guess what? Let's watch some people play. I'm excited because I love ZZ Top and I dig it. I love the old stuff. I love the new stuff. I love the drum machine stuff. I did. I am a fan. Guess what? Let's watch some people play. All right, here we go. Let's see what these people have to say. Oh, here we go. Steve Toko, I believe. It's gotta be Toko. It's not Tuesday. 7,680 subs. You got it going, brother. Let's see what's happening. I'm, while they're talking, I'm gonna look at some China symbols. We got a China over here. It's maybe, I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a lot of different kind of symbols. We got some Sabian crashes. We got some Ks. Maybe that's KZs. Maybe they're 13s. Going back to the 90s kind of vibe. Uh, EC2's on the top. Ah, oh, nice and bright. Oh, he's doing a Picaro or a Purdy type shuffle over this. A Texas shuffle is different. It works, it does. You're still shuffling. <laughs> Went for the straight gad. I liked it. Nice. That right hand is doing it, man. Pulsing on those K's like that. Oh, good job. Nice, Phil. Oh, Steve, this is it, man. Did this six years ago. Good job, Steve. Solid plan. Solid plan. It's a good day to be on the Matt Galbo covers. <laughs> Review! Hey, we got Sign of Drums coming in. All right, LaGrange, your ZZ Top uh, cover. 1.24 million people watching you play. You got a clear... No, no, no. That's a... Is that a wrap? No, no, no. That is a clear kit. It's just the amber color. I don't know exactly. She's kind of going back and forth with the right, left, right, left with the uh, three-stroke thing. Cool. So many different ways to play that. Yeah. And Frank Beard will be proud. Oh man, she is. That bass drum part is. Man, you'd really have to be locked with the bass player to pull that one off good. That would be a hard one live. Alright, right on. Cool. You did this three years ago. Sign of drums. Or sign of dash drums. Alright. Man, I want to hear what those toms sound like. Come on. I need some tom action. I wish I knew what kind of company does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw that a guy said, old session drummer here. We love you. Stay off the drugs. Hey. <laughs> That's right. Hard drugs would never get you anywhere. Oh, there we go. Kind of did the pretty shuffle thing. Nobody's really, or uh, she hasn't really laid into the Texas shuffle. There it is. 
you kind of you kind of forget about the Texas Shuffle if you hop into the pretty thing because it feels so good to play that shuffle. Well, hey, learn some drums. Okay. I'm I'm guessing that he is introducing this. Uh, okay, We've got the Yamahas. Oh, oh, here we go. We can actually read it here. You see. You saw that pattern, that left hand and is doing the shuffle. The left hand is is the shuffle. Oh, there we go. I always found it funny with the electric drum companies that they went for making the rim sounds. I enjoy it. I thought it was a neat idea. In my head, I would love to use those for other ways, but I understand what they did and I think it's pretty fun. Oh yeah, electric drums. Victor Medesona. Medesona. I don't know how to say that. You got 1,080 subs, and you are laying it down with those rollings, man. Come on in with the flannel. Ah. Ooh. Woo. Wow. Kick drum and that left hand doing that pattern. Oh, that's neat. It kind of is floating in between straight and shuffle. There's a couple of shuffles that are, to me, hard because it's in between straight and shuffle. <laughs> And it's not a varying of swing, it's just kind of in between it. It's, it's unusual. You know, Chuck Berry and some of that stuff, there's two different types of swings going on. Straight on top of something. Oh, that was nice. I like how you set your kit up and how it was in between the snare drum. You didn't see the two toms as a regular five-piece kit. <laughs> there you go. Come back in for one more. Right on. Good job. LaGrange, as we say in Chicago, LaGrange. LaGrange, great. What? ZZ Top, very expert. Bonzolium. Uh, Bonzolium with 59.5k. What is that ride symbol doing? Uh, prank caller, man. I'm not really sure. I didn't even hear the song. Oh, here we go. Online drummer, 67.60. No, 600 people watching. Good job, online drummer. We got a zillage. Oh, we're coming in with some zillage in action. Look at that. There we go. It looks like I got a couple of different, a hat, I got a splash, a couple of crashes, I got a little six inch tiny. Tingy splash ting. Got some Evans drum heads. I can't tell which those are, just a coated something, I don't know. I still haven't come up with my exact opinion on how I like the UVs yet. Maybe I just, I, I keep trying different things. Ooh, boy, those are bright and they are nice. That sounds, yeah, that's a pingy zillion rod. Looks like one of, they had a series of China symbols. I guess they still make them with that red label. I didn't know a lot about them, but I think they were supposed to be more trashy than like the the, Welcome back to another the ping of the pang. Huh. What? Nate, what? <laughs> what just happened? I just got weirdly pranked called after it wasn't a prank call. I, that was a new one for me. Uh, okay, I wanted to hear you play, and I was enjoying hearing you play. All right, Dominic Nardone, 15,000 AK. We got a Neil Pert spinning drum set in the back. I like it. I think it's Neil Pert kind of a tribute thing. But that is that reverb is huge. That's a set of pearls. He is just doing it right there on that rim. No problem. Got it happening. I kind of like the way the snares rattle when you hit the snare drum on the rim. He's got his crash symbol over here on the right. Polish. Nice. Comes in, making Frank Beer proud. That's a washy rise symbol, Dominic. Nardone, right on. Oh, I like the color. It looks like it's the color of my first guitar I ever had as a kid. And I was terrible at it, but hurt my fingers so bad at the time. But it was that color. All right, man, you are just laying into it. Kind of laying that back beat with the drag left hand. For a, for a, <laughs> that sort of vibe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. We're back to the three shirt roll with the right hand. I think that's probably how Frank played that. It kind of makes sense how they would do that. It would keep it real consistent in the studio. Everybody's played that feels so correct. I got a feeling I probably didn't. <laughs> I, I have no idea what I was feeling at the time. <laughs> no idea. Good job playing. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's doing his with uh, going into the flam. All right. Kind of, you know, courses it up in a way. I like it. Snowboard Fozzy, 306 subs. All right, man, look at that good looking room. You got the sub kick on that Tama. I wonder which Tama kit that is. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, wait a minute. Is this a, this is a prank caller. I haven't heard this. This is a prank caller, Snowboard Fozzy. Oh, and you got, oh, and see, you can, man, you got your taxi shuffle thing happening. Look at that. You come down and come and hit the two and the four. You don't push into the two and the four, but. Oh, I hate this prank caller. 
snowboard, Bozzy. I appreciate it. Catch you next time. <laughs> to the slopes, boys. To the slopes. Oh, Maggie Ad Adroit. All right, Maggie Adroit with your 800 subs. Let's see what you got happening here. Rumors spreading yeah. around. What? I want to hear this. I, I think those are. Oh, I see the Sabian XS. I don't even know what those are. Looks like she's got her. Oh, I want to see them. The mics, I believe, are the sure ones. 10, 12, 16, or 14 kit. Oh, I want to see everybody play. Come on, you got to at least get me with the fill. If I'm going to hear the prank calls, I at least got to hear the fill. Oh, there we go. Kind of went with a three shirt roll in between the thing. Oh, I like it. Good tats, good vibe. I like the two cameras. I hate it as a prank caller. <laughs> Catch you on the next one. Maximilian Fessel, 192 subs. All right, you got the got the vibe having right on that 10. I like it. Doing the left-handed three-stroke going into those. I like it. I like it. The symbols are nice and shiny. Got a splash over here with its own stand with some cowbells. Matt Cowbell cover approves. <laughs> oh, we got a crash right... It looks like it's right in the center. Uh, I don't know. I really can't tell. This is, ooh, this is a little, this has got a little speed to it. I haven't heard it, I haven't done, heard it done this fast. Looks like you got pinstripes with some duct tape controlling the, the ring. I don't know if it's a 10, 14, 16 or not. I have no idea. You got the China. All right, give me, here it goes, here we go. Uh, okay, cool. I think I got it. I think it was like the Gad thing, except I couldn't hear the kick drum. Oh, there we go, got the catch. I think it was like a Gad thing with, I just, the kick drum kind of got quiet during it, so I couldn't really hear the definition exact, I think. Maximilian Vessel, good catches, man. Good catches. Back to the 10. Gotta bring it back down, the conductor says. <laughs> good job, good job. Brandon Knight, 81 subs. Wow, here's the difference in pitch and the speed so i guess maybe it was changed maybe in the moises app or something like that or i i don't know it got me all right we got some jingles on those hats over there everybody's got their guitar amp setups for practice <laughs> are those dream symbols and a sabian china it looks like one of those paragon chinas i bet that actually sounds really good oh a jam block on the right man there's some man you have served that part of the song well it's like, get ready, boys. Here comes dinner. I'm serving it up. Ah, right. that's a nice crash on that symbol. AAX. Good job saving on your AAX stuff. Sounds good. Is that a? I think it's a. That's one. That's a. I think it's a 13-inch snare drum. Oh, that sounded a lot like Frank Beard. I wasn't really sure if Frank played that exactly right, like he was going for the Gad thing, and it went almost like eighth notes that were straight for a sec before it switched into the triplet. I really couldn't tell. It was neat. When I've heard him play it, it sounds more like Gad. But the way they did it on the recording made it unique. Oh, nice. Got the ring on the snare, so it just kind of controls those overtones. I can't tell what kind of heads those on those toms. I couldn't really tell. Good job playing. Good cymbal sound. Alexio... Antio Palus, 290 subs. And we got a live snare drum sound right now. And wow, look at that symbol setup. Let's see what's going on with this hat because there's something going on top of the hat that I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's a, it's it's on top. I, I wow, I have no idea. Uh, that's, oh well, but we got some Evans happening on the snare drum. We got some, uh, Remo's on the top. All right, man, nice. That's a good trashy Istanbul over there. Nice. There we go. I had at Nam. I signed up with a symbol company years ago, and it was a company that was trying to get into the U.S. market, and I liked their stuff. Oh, there we go. Nice plan, Luxio. Two hundred ninety subs, and you are doing it up, man. He's got his traditional grip doing the Texas Shuffle. It's nice. The symbol company was Impression Symbol. I, I liked him. I talked to the owner. He invited me into the you know the family of their stuff and you know that I was enjoying what they were doing. And he was he says, "Why don't you just take these hats home that you like?" He's just you know it's, it was just they were very really nice to me. And they never got the distribution deal. And then I think it was that Istanbul company came in out of Atlanta and they sent all the artists to them. And I I didn't connect with that company at all. 
Hey, we got Jacob Gallon. 124 subs. Crazy, crazy endorsement stories. They're not all they're cracked up to be at times. There we go. We got 124 subs. We got a DW kit. I asked the performance series. Uh, no, no, no. That is a designer. Man. Doing it up. Looks like there's Aquarian heads, I think, on those. Got a B8. See some guys taking those V8 symbols on YouTube and relating them. They get nice and dark. It's pretty neat what they're doing. It makes them have a whole different sound that sounds way more pro maybe uh, than the V8s. Even though, even V8 Pro say pro. It is different. <laughs> Alright Jacob Gallon, you are just swinging that hand man. Laying the one and the three, the two and the four. The song is there and you have absolutely done it well. Good job. Alexi drummer with 23,400 subs. All right, he's got his left hand three strokes. His head bends is rocking. It just cracked me up. He's got his china right in the middle. Uh, there's a guy from Corn, I believe, that did that. All right, man. I don't know what kit this is, but you got it happening. It looks like it's a pearl kit. Oh. Dude. Eight years ago, I bet you are killing this. Oh, eight years ago, and you're laying it down like this? Good job. Nice reactive drumming, but it's okay. I bet uh, you are killing it. I hope you come up on some more Mad Cowboy covers, because that would be fun. You hear it, young man. You hear it. And that's a good thing. It's an amazing thing. Everybody can kind of learn to play, and people will learn to play better. But the people that can hear it, it's just you, know, you learn to work together as a team. Good job, young man. Good job. Who else we got? Who else we got? My two sons drumming. All right, my two sons drumming coming in. All right, keep calm and keep drumming. Okay, we got some three strokes happening on the right hand. We got our board is over there on the far right on a desk or a table or something. Let's see what we got. We got some, uh, looks like we got a splash. We got our hats nice and low, just like barely above the, uh, no, 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 they're higher than that. I guess it was just the angle of the camera. It looked like the hats were solo. Whenever I've sat in with anybody and the drummer had their hat solo, you can't, if you're sitting in, never move anything, ever. Never, ever move anything. Just sit in, take your lumps for being silly and sitting in on a kit that you had no idea about, but never move anything. My two sons drumming with your 384 subs. You are laying it down. Come on, Texas. Come on. I like that. He's leaving the, the snare drum is kind of like a, a singular thing without a cymbal with it, so it makes it a pure sound. I remember reading something years ago in Modern Drummer about Charlie Watts from the Stones talking about he did that because he wanted the pure sound of the snare drum. I thought it was kind of neat and that's why he did that technique. I was good with it. My two sons drumming, good job. Nice plan, nice plan. There's a bunch of people, so I got lots to go through today. Uh, who else we got? Come on, Willie Covers. Do your Willie Coverness. <laughs> Coverness. <laughs> Who's rocks? We got an 8, 10, 12. 13, 14, 16 happening with a couple of octobons up top. Oh, you're doing yours just like single strokes. I like it, man. You got your minor. You got a you got a pad right there under those toms. Uh, like I mean, it's a Elisa sample pad, maybe. I can't tell. I think it is. Um, let's see. Yeah. All right, who's rocks? <laughs> they got a lot of nice girls there. <laughs> Jackie. Wow. That'll never look like a slow-mo shot. <laughs> oh, man, that snare drum work is right on. The ebony pinstripes are doing their ebonyness. <laughs> I like it. All right, here we go. Big lick, big lick, big lick. Get ready. Oh, that was really good. That sounded great, man. Nice. 6,150 people watching you play drums. I think that's like a holy splash over there over next to that rod. Man, that is, that is a seriously reverbed out sound with a plate and some uh, it's it's a neat sound it's it's not my sound for the reverse but great playing either way that's all that matters laying it down right it's the sound guy's job to make you sound good it's your job to make it, you and the drum sound good jamie ratcliffe drums 32 subs coming in oh we got to click in and i'm a little nervous all right oh that's a neat way to play that you got your mic on that snare drum i think Maybe you did this, you did this two months ago. You might have actually did this with a Moises. I need to learn how to say that right. It doesn't matter. I like it. I use it some. 
Man, everybody, everybody is nailing Fred's Hill. Good job. Oh, oh, we are zipping through people today. <laughs> I'm sorry if I don't get to see everybody play. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> it's a popular song. Tobias Gregg, 65 subs. All right. All right. You got everybody. A lot of people have the 13 inch snare drums. They do. They got a neat sound. They're in a little unusual. To, oh, here we go. All right. Oh, that China was cool. I like that. Laying into the bell on the quarters. I like it. That's different. Nice. I like it. Got your P PSTs. Sounds good. Sounds like good sounding drums. I think it's the Power Stroke 3 over there. You get your X hat. Is that the Constantinople ones? They sound a lot like. Alright. Dicka, 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 dicka. Alright, cool. I'm in. Oh, I like it, man. That pulsing, that ride is just laying in there. What kind of kit is this? Is this a crush kit? I think it might be. Their kits sound good tuned high to me. I don't know which kit this was. They had a couple of unusual ones called Winge. They were different. I never got to play those. All right, man. I wonder what kind of was. That was a good job playing. I love that pulsing on the ride like that. That was neat. Nobody's done it. Matt covers 67 subs, and you're presenting us with some Lagrange and Bond Visionage. Oh, we got a we got a Joey Jordanson set that's been scaled down to a three piece. All right, Matt Covers, let's see what you got. You got the corrugated walls over there. That's a roofing material that Home Depot sells. You can get it in different colors. But it's hard as a rock. Waterproof. I know a lot of weird stuff. All right, Matt Covers, get us in. Everybody's doing that one well. Got the cowbell happening. I wonder if the China's going to see some action. Let's see. Is that a... I don't know what kind of drum stool that is. It might be a pearl thing that I don't know what they came out with. I really don't know. Laying it down with the two and the four. The bass drum is doing it one, a two. So the bass drum's got the shuffle. To me, the bass drum has a shuffle. The right hand is already doing the shuffle, but the bass drum carried it to me. Oh, what? There we go. Catch us some cymbals. Those are some sizzly crashes. All right. I can't tell what kind of red felts those are on those cymbals. I got, there's a drum show in Nashville this weekend, and I picked up some good playing. I picked up some neat little clamps that just they they're so simple and they just squeeze right onto your threads of your stuff and it makes it so easy and it oh i don't know i don't know who makes them but i got them over at the drum supply dsh drum supply house in east nashville i got them from andy foot goodness they're easy and they work well and fast oh william v baldo gave us a roll going in i like it oh he's still giving us some rolls i like it all right man Get us into this thing. You got your headphones on. You got speakers on the wall. We got, oh, you got 57s on everything. That's 57s you never, ever can go wrong with. They sound great. Oh, we are really getting just pieces of things today. Wow. Jumberboy.jankness, I think. We got a neat looking, oh, the prank collars. That's why I'm not getting much of everything. It's all these prank collars. That's what it is. Oh, man. I like this drum set. <laughs> there you go, man. Come into it. Do your thing. I like it. Got the open handed playing. I hate that this is a prank caller. Oh, prank caller, prank caller in a row. <laughs> I don't want to have prank caller square. Oh, this came in at an unusual place. And listen to that Stuart Copeland ride. A 13 inch snare with a fat head. A DW uh, kit. Oh, and he, he's got 10, 12, 16 because he wanted two floor toms. That's kind of why I switched and got a 13 inch and 10, 13, 16 to do that. And that's what this kid is, is 10, 13, 16. We got an, an SPD over here. We got wind chimes. Come on, hit your wind chimes in this song. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got the rotor tom. Oh, he went with a double bass thing. Daga, 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 daga. Kind of with a double bass thing. But I want to hear that rotor tom over there. Like, doo, boo. Rototoms are unusual instruments, and I just saw this Virtue Snare company reached out to me, and they are back in business because I said something about Virtue Snares. So funny. I love it. Rototom snare drums. All right, man. I like this. He's got he's got low volume cymbals. You don't really notice it that bad. He's using multi rods. This is good. It's a low volume cover. He keeps everything low volume, and he still gets to use the blue rod. Good playing. I like it. And the real song. Yay! Oh, Manu Panner, 58 subs. All right, Manu Panner. This is, <laughs> it sounds like clocks that are out of sync. They can't sync up. Oh, that that was strange. They never, it was like hearing four flute players trying to play into. It just doesn't happen. 
<laughs> Thud Mother Bennett Williams. Man, that is a funny name. That's great. You got, oh, let's see what you got, man. Let's see what you got. That's a great name. Oh, we got some villages happening. We have a 13 by probably seven or seven and a quarter center, it looks like. I, I'm enjoying the symbol setup, my man. I am. It looks a lot like what's behind me right over there. <laughs> oh, got his in ears in. All right, all right. We did this two years ago. Oh. Oh, wow. That's it, y'all. <laughs> Thud mother. That's the Texas shuffle. You push into the sec the two and the four, and you have to lock into where he's playing the guitar, and that's what makes it so hard because your left hand, it is a workout. It's easier if you do it the way he's doing it where you're doing both hands the whole time, but I don't think Frank Beard played it exactly like that. He used a lot of quarters. All right, that was a cool one. I liked it. The toms are nice and bright. Oh, yeah, right back to the intro, man. I like it. I like it. I'm trying to see where you're uh, doing the three-stroke at. Man, this is right on the money with a ZZ Top cover just laying it down. It's a long song. Here we go. Got that hat locking down the quarters. Oh, and see, he's changed the right hand to do the swing pattern, and that's that's it right there. The left hand is still pushing that shuffle like that, and that right hand is just swinging. Great job, Bennett Williams. Man. Those are some high pitch times, but some wonderful playing. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Oh, that was great. Everybody was just laying that Texas shuffle down. It was fun. I enjoyed watching everybody do the Texas shuffle or different versions of it. It's an unusual pattern. That left hand, it really pushes and goes back and forth. That whole vibe of Texas music, that's it's very cool. Listening to those guys and watching the videos after I kind of put all this together and did my video, which you'll see in just a second, but the video and finding different ways that they did it. I went back to like a 1974 concert or 76. I can't remember what it was, but I went to one of the old concerts and it was great. I watched how they did it and three people. One, two, three. Three people. Held down the entertainment for a stadium show. That's mind-blowing. Three people, no video screens, nothing. It was just speakers, lights, and three dudes and a massive road crew. <sighs> Pretty cool. It's very cool, and it was captivating to watch them do what they did. I love Billy Gibbons' guitar playing. I do. I am a fan. I can't play like that and I wish I could because that cat chooses good notes and he influences my heroes that I love to hear on guitar. Even though I'm not a blues fan, I've never been a blues fan. Now, I know it hurts my playing not being one. I understand the notes of the pentatonic scale, I do. It's, it's a drag losing different people. Prince was a big deal and I hate I can really never do Prince stuff on here because after getting blocked that one time, I won't go back to Warner Brothers Prince stuff. Unless Sheila contacts me, hey Chad, you're welcome to play whatever you want to play. I'm like, I can, then it's on. Because I love being able to play stuff and I love being able to go to ZZ Top and play one of my favorite songs that they ever did. I, I thought it was great. I loved how that guitar lays that two and the four down. The bass, Dusty Hill. Goodness, man. You kind of lay that groove down. And I saw a lot of bass players that dusty influenced just playing in bands through the years i think the first bass players i ever saw like that were in probably athens georgia doing blues type stuff but they looked and sounded like dusty hill playing it's kind of what they kind of went for it was this old blues looking bass player and to this day even where i am right you know down the street there are guys that look just like this that play bass and that dude really influenced them cz top's influence was pretty huge for three you know, regular old dudes playing some blues. <laughs> I liked it. It's very fun. I enjoy ZZ Top. I really, really enjoyed the Eliminator stuff. I did. And I actually liked Afterburner. There was there was good stuff. They've just done different music through the years, and they've stayed relevant in their own kind of way. I like kind of playing up the cowboy hats for a while at, 
and then they quit playing cowboy hats and kind of went to the beanies or other type hats and you know, it's always kind of worked frank beard's always had a crazy looking drum set back there and anytime you've ever seen live things with him it's usually always something crazy so you can tell this cast grew up in the 70s wanted it to have a showpiece back there because there weren't very many visuals back then there weren't big screens you know <laughs> there just weren't it wasn't happening the visuals weren't happening yet but it was on its way progress <laughs> hey i hope you enjoyed hearing some zz top and to see me play click right here and that'll help that <laughs> that'll help your eardrums i appreciate it rest in peace dusty hill thank you and zz top for making great great three-piece rock and roll I appreciated it. I did. Even with the synth, I still loved it. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, y'all. See you next week. <laughs>